held here at the church, which begins on Saturday morning and ends on Sunday afternoon. The weekend is an amazing opportunity for the men of our parish to build new friendships with other men in the parish, deepen their faith, and explore ways to live that faith more fully in everything that we do. I invite you to turn your attention to the video screen and listen as Jude shares the impact that Welcome has had on him and how it has changed his life. I've been a credit colleague my whole life, and uh, I knew a lot about the mass, but uh, at some point, uh, it just became, I was just doing it out of obligation. The first time I heard about Welcome was during an announcement during the mass. Uh, I also had a few friends that attended St. Jude and had gone to Welcome, and I was also at uh, I was CIA at the time, and I had some people come and talk about it while I was there. I signed up very late, almost the Monday before the retreat, and I was put on a wait list. But I already had a deep feeling at that point that I was going to go to the retreat. And lo and behold, uh, around Thursday, uh, I was called. I felt God calling me to go for it, and so that was that last push, if I was doubting it at all, that I knew I, I had to go for the retreat. Ooh, welcome, welcome, welcome changed my life. You know, one of the first things I distinctly remember was just how open the men were to sharing their stories and uh, the camaraderie. It, it just drew me in a deeper way. Just, I just felt a deeper calling at that point, a, a certain peace that I'd not in a while. And, and that's what uh, Welcome did for me. The, the impact of, uh, of Welcome in my life has been transformative. Welcome really helped me to appreciate, well, uh, actually two things was adoration and going to confession. I'm not going to confession, uh, I would say a very long time before I came, I, I came to Welcome. Just feel like I was renewed, really just changed me in a certain way I didn't expect it. And now after Welcome, I go to confession uh, more regularly. It has definitely helped me to, to be more calm in the difficulties and really drawn me to adoration and uh, in that quietness with Christ. It definitely brings a relief and, and that's something that Welcome uh, has done for me. I would say for, for anybody that has not been to Welcome before, if you're waiting for a calling, this is the calling. Sign up and go for Welcome. It will change you in ways that you can't think of right now. I'm so thankful I attended it, and it's just transformed me and changed me. Jude is just one of more than 1,200 men from our parish who have attended Welcome since our first retreat over 20 years ago, and all have similar stories to tell. Welcome helps to become a better husband, a better father, a better brother, in a word, a better man. It can inspire you, like it has so many others, to, leave, to live each day boldly as a Catholic man in a world that so often seems void of any Christian values. If you have not yet attended CHIRP or Welcome Weekend here at St. Jude, please join us on August 20th and 21st for your amazing weekend. Now, college football starts the following weekend so you don't have any reason not to attend. And it certainly won't hurt you to have some bonus points to your credit before you start praying for some miracles to happen. There are brochures in the pews and with more information, and all of us in green shirts will be at the exits after Mass to answer any questions and help sign you up. The welcome experience. There is more to life. Join us for the weekend to discover how much more Thank you for your time. Thank you, Father Ricardo and Father Andrew, for allowing us to speak today. Our priest for this morning's Mass is Father Ricardo. Reyes, assisting him in giving the homilies, Deacon Robert Holliday. Please join in singing our opening hymn found in your white songbooks, Come Worship the Lord, number 23. Number 23 in your white songbooks, Come Worship the Lord.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, in order to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. through the grace of adoption, chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Saphat of Abel Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Saphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelve. 
Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye and I will follow you. Elijah answered, go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him and taking the yoke of the oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. They are opposed to one another, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me first, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another one said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I think one time, at one time or another, most of us have made that promise to Jesus. Lord, just show me what to do. Show me where to go. Tell me, and I'll do it. Only to be sidetracked by our jobs, or our marriage, or children problems, or death in the family, or something traumatic that happens to throw us off our course, or just life itself in general. Jesus reminds us today, though, not to get distracted, not to look back at the things that we've done or the things that that road that we have been on. He's telling us to look ahead, not to be consumed with the world, but to live our lives for him. The the road is straight and narrow, he tells us, and we need to keep our eyes on it. So prior to going into the diaconate, I was uh, one of the team leaders for our youth group. This was years ago, and 
Uh, every summer, we would, of course, we'd work with them all year long, but every summer we would take them to a camp. And I know some of you have probably been at these camps or your children have been in the camps, uh, uh, the Pines or Pine Cove or Rock and Sea Ranch. And, and one summer we went to Rock and Sea Ranch. And uh, it was the first time I'd been there. Uh, I think some of the kids had been there before. It was the first time I was there. And um, a number of them wanted to go on this rope course. And I haven't been on a rope course before, and I was one of the team leaders, so I had to go with them. And we came to this real tall tree that had a kind of a rope ladder on it. And you'd put a, a harness on you and with a rope tied to this harness, and you'd climb up this ladder, all oh, about 20, 25 feet, and get on this platform. So you're on this platform. I was up on this platform with four or five other kids and the instructor there, the guy that, that from Rock and Sea that helped us out. And in front of us was this course. And what it was is where there's these boards about every two feet and they were tied with a rope. And then there was a, two ropes that went along the side. So what you had to do is hold it onto these ropes. You had to jump out every two feet on these boards to make it across this 25, 30 foot length. And I looked at that course and I looked down and I said, no way, <laughs> I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> it scared me to death. I mean, you had to jump from one to another. Even though you still had a harness on, you had this rope to hold on still, you had to do that. And it was, it was a long way to the bottom until this little girl about 15 years old, walks up about this high to me, and she says, I'll go. And she goes running across this thing. Doon, 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 all the way across. And so I kind of you know, said, okay, all right, she can, she can do it. By golly, I can do it. And I raised my hand, and I said, I'll, I'll go. And I did, I took off. And I found out that as I went, it became easier because I was more confident. And sure enough, I got all the way through without falling. I think most everybody did because it probably went as hard as, as hard as I thought it was going to be. And so um, I, I, I think that's kind of how our faith journey is. Many of us are on this little platform here at church. And many of us stand there because what we see in front of us, this path that God is calling us to, is kind of scary. And some of us think it's kind of hard. We get so caught up in our lives and in this world and the things that are happening and everything's coming at us a thousand miles an hour and we want to hold on to what is comfortable. We want to hold on to that platform and we don't want to get off and get out onto God's path for us. It's like this welcome retreat thing that we heard earlier. God's calling us to get on that path. God's calling us to, to do something, to, to change our lives to do more than just be here, but actually give ourselves to him and start down that road that he wants us to be on. Some of us have courage to say yes, a lot of us have. A lot of us have been on this welcome retreat or other retreats or Bible studies or been to places that are to conferences that have, that have touched our hearts and made us want to get on this road and get on this path. And once we get on this path, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It's exciting. It's something we don't want to get off once we go, once we find out that God loves us so much that he's created a path just for me to follow him. I took my first step off that platform onto God's path about 25 years now, and it was to one of these welcome retreats. Actually, it was the first one. They called it something different back there, but it was the same thing. 
And that retreat turned my life completely around. It took hold of my heart, and it said, go, <laughs> keep going. And no, 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 it doesn't matter how many times I've fallen, and I guarantee you my knees are bruised, doesn't, doesn't matter how many times I'll fall or how many times you fall, that's what the Holy Spirit's about. The Holy Spirit is that lifeline. He's the one that picks us up and puts us back on and keeps us going. Takes care of us. Jesus tells us, get off. Come to me. Get on this path. Don't look back at that platform that where our life is, our easy life is, where all the things of this world, the glitter and all the wonderful things are back there. Keep your eyes on the path. Keep your eyes on him. Just a few weeks ago, my wife and some friends of ours went down to the Redemptionist Martyr Seminary. That's where Father went. And we went there for their year of the carnival, and it was, it was a blast. I mean, there were so many things going on. And, but while we were there, the, the one seminarian took us on a tour of the, of the seminary. Uh, they have about 25, something like that, seminarians there from all over the world. And, um, and so they, they took us through the classrooms and where they eat and where they sleep and things like that. And in one place they took us to, it was a prayer it's where they pray daily. It's a prayer room. And they have a tabernacle on the wall, just like we do here. But above the tabernacle, they have the Bible. They have the Word of God. And the seminarian tells us the reason they have it there above the tabernacle is because that is our path to God. It's through the Word and through the Eucharist that we find God. So when they're there and they're praying, they look at these two things, and it's these things that are drawing them to God. And it's the same thing that draws us to God. We come here to hear the Word, and we come here to take the Eucharist. And it's these two things that build us up. It's these two things that make us want to take that step off our platform and go down this path that God has for us. It's an amazing and wonderful journey that each and every one of us is called to take. And every journey is different. Every one of us has a different path. All we have to do is suck it up, take a deep breath, take that step out and you'll find that path is amazing. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all our angels, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory, and judge the living and dead, and his kingdom have no end. Believe in me, in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and your life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and Lord of life, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one Catholic the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Let us make our prayers of intercession a part of our pilgrimage of faith as we follow Christ to our promised inheritance. For unity and peace within the Catholic Church on earth, let us pray to the Lord. For our graduated high school students, that they will open their hearts to be led by the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. For those who make excuses to escape the demands to follow God, let us pray to the Lord. For all fathers here at St. Jude, especially those whose names are placed at the foot of the altar, let us pray to the Lord. For our high school youth spending this weekend at the Steubenville Conference in Irving, that their eyes and hearts will be open to Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and who are dying, for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially we pray for Ed Stemick, Patricia Priest, Patrick Cole, Patricia Cole, Stan Dietz, Wilma Aquino, and John Hayden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for the living and deceased members of St. Jude whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. God our Father, never let us look back or hesitate as we journey towards the kingdom. May these prayers strengthen us in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is found in your hymnals, number 797, number 797, Prayer of St. Francis. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and for the laws of the whole church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, 
Grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Please join in singing number 540 in your hymnals, number 540, Gift of Finest Wheat. second communion song is found in your white songbook number 88 revelation song number 88 
So we have a few announcements this, uh, this afternoon or this morning. As you may have noticed, we often have many people praying the rosary before the weekend masses. If you're interested in leading the rosary, please contact Brandon Powell or Della Doss. We will get you set up in the MSP and begin scheduling you. The only requirements are a love for the rosary and a willingness to lead. This is one of those steps you take off the platform. <laughs> if you're interested in serving as an EM, training will begin be held on Saturday, July the 2nd at 9 a.m. There is no need to sign up or register. Everyone who's interested will meet in the narthex on July 2nd. More information is in the bulletin or in the news and event page. Seasoned Saints will return Tuesday, June 28th. Join us for a great time for coffee, donuts, and fellowship in the reception area following morning mass. This ministry is for those 55 or older. Sorry, Father. <laughs> but you can still join in no matter what you're at. It's time for the annual school supply drive. To participate, you can pick up a tag from one of the crosses in the transepts or from the basket in the narthex. You can also find a list of need, uh, needed items on the webpage. This supply drive is a critical blessing to those families and local schools who do not have the means to purchase school supplies. Please have these items back to the church office by July 24th. Contact Katie Dale if you need any information. If you're in need of a job, the St. Jude Career Alliance is hosting a one-day workshop on Saturday, July 9th. This free workshop will help you improve your resume, train you in interviewing skills, and help you understand the job market. Register for this free workshop online. The St. Jude Raffle Committee has started our fundraising efforts, and we're so excited to bring back the silent auction this year. Our mission is to help provide the essential items that children need to help them through the school year. These essential items include, but are not limited, to summer meal programs, field trip assistance and scholarships. Last year, we raised over $19,000 to support these efforts. If you'd like to support this raffle and silent auction, you can find a link on our website or you can use the QR code in the bulletin. And St. Jude Carnival Committee monthly meeting will be on Wednesday, July 6th at 7 p.m. in the Parish Hall as we begin preparing for this year's carnival. We're looking for help, especially in the areas of leading tasks on the day of the carnival, such as water, safety, setup, etc. If you'd like to be part of this great event, just show up on Wednesday, July 6th or see page four of the bulletin to contact a committee member. And remember that the men from the Welcome Retreat team will be at the exits to answer any questions you have. Uh, so please sign up if you haven't been. And uh, don't forget there is time to register for the July retreat. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorify our Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is found in your hymnals, number 633. Number 633, Jesus shall reign. We will sing the first and last verses.